I've been asked to project the growth for enterprise class AI co-pilots deployed for the rest of this year. Okay, let's do this. First, what is an enterprise class generative AI co-pilot? Well, that's an advanced artificial intelligence system that's designed to collaboratively assist and augment human users in various tasks, leveraging generative AI capabilities to contribute actively to the creative and decision-making process. It's a type of technology that's customized for specific enterprise applications, learning from user interactions and from the business context to provide tailored support. So, we're definitely not talking about someone in the corner of an office using ChatGPT to answer questions they have, right? What we mean is a tool that's able to actively generate suggestions or solutions or content in real time, creating a meaningful relationship with users at that particular organization in a way that enhances their productivity or their creativity doing problem solving within organizational workflows. So that's what we're talking about here. And estimates about adoption for that are pretty confusing. For example, we know that the OpenAI CTO, Mira Murati, was quoted as saying that more than 92% of Fortune 500 companies use the OpenAI platform, up from 80% in August. What can she mean by that? No way have 92% of Fortune 500 companies implemented the kind of enterprise class solution that we just described, right? Not yet. So what is she saying? Okay, so her statement would make sense if we assume that for Mira, the words using the open AI platform simply mean having access to the platform, maybe experimenting with its capabilities, maybe setting up accounts, trying out different models and tools, maybe running a few pilot projects. Maybe she's also including any company that's connected in any way to any open AI-based third-party tools or APIs. Okay, sure, that could easily be 92% or even more by now. Another data point. O'Reilly Media reports that 18% of respondents have generative AI applications in production. Okay, in production doing what? The context for that statement is marketing. In fact, they go on to say that 47% of respondents use generative AI to create marketing copy. Hmm, okay, sure. Could be, but what about enterprise class co-pilots, our topic? What's the adoption rate for those right now? And what will that look like by the end of this year? To answer that, I put together data from several sources, the United Nations Population Division, the White Collar International Labor Organization, data from IDC. Okay. So let's look at population as a bar chart and then show the percent of white collar workers per region as a magenta line. And then the percent of those workers using company enabled co-pilots as part of their official workflow as an orange line. So that's a percent of a percent on that line fluctuating at about 1% of white collar workers worldwide as we kick off the new year. Now, using a digital employee survey by Statista and other sources, 
we can try to project that forward. And for that, I get 148 million office workers globally over just the next 12 months, or about 24% of white-collar workers worldwide by January 2025. And you can imagine that ratio will probably be a lot higher for North America and Europe, which are blended into that 24% global average. It looks exponential, which makes sense because generative AI works really well. And there's a well-understood approach for how to implement co-pilots in an enterprise setting. And there's a very good business case for doing that. So whatever the exact number turns out to be when the ball drops on January 1, 2025, if 24% is more or less where this is going, then let's think about where you and I want to be within that wave of adoption. In the middle? In the rear? Maybe in the front? <laughs> At this particular moment, it's apparently still possible to be a leader. So that's an individual choice that you and I need to make. It's a choice that relates to our corporate culture, maybe to our SWOT analysis, maybe to the five forces model, all that. But let's take one example. Okay, American Express is a market leader. They have a long legacy and they play within a conservative industry, financial services. And yet, Amex Digital Labs launches 20 to 25 AI-driven pilots per year. Question, can you and I afford to be much less innovative than American Express? They're already a market leader, and yet they're out there every month working to widen the gap even more. So to summarize, at this particular moment, it still seems to many people as if implementing an enterprise class co-pilot is a very innovative thing to do. But already by the end of this very year, that same initiative might already be past the early adopter stage, already part of the early majority. You recall that early majority is that group that takes action only after it's been influenced by the positive experiences of others they see around them. Is that where we want to be? And then after that comes the late majority. Based on the trends we just saw, it seems there's not much time left to decide which group we want to be a part of. 